Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're very happy to have you here. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. This one is our third video dedicated to high-speed networks. That is the reason why we are here. This one, the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet pluggable USB adapter, which comes, uh, is going to be very handy. We're going to discuss it in a few moments. Uh, why pluggable? Why this device? Well, basically, we had a very good experience with this pluggable 1 gigabit per second Ethernet adapter. It works just fine. It works out of the box, and you're not going to have to install any drivers if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 8. Um, this one, for example, at 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, as we said, it, uh, has one great advantage. It has this Type-C connector. If you unplug it from here in the back, it is going to give you exactly the same performance. We tested it with uh, various computers with uh, USB 3.0 and higher, and it works just great. Why 2.5 uh, gigabit adapters? Basically, we like to compare it with traffic. Uh, it's not like having higher speeds. It's more like having more lanes. Uh, it's like having one lane, uh, one in opposite directions and 2.5 lanes, uh, let's say it, for 2.5 gigabit per second uh, lanes. The same thing with 1 gigabit per second and the same thing with 10 gigabit per second uh, lanes. A lot of people have complained that they get more than 1 gigabit per second internet connections and they get only 1 gigabit per second into their networks. Um, wouldn't it be nice, for example, to have 2.5 gigabit per second in your network? That is the reason why we are here. That is the reason why a lot of people buy these devices. But not only that, we're also going to consider the other or going beyond this internet connection. For example, sharing information with a server or with a NAS that has higher capacities like um, 10 gigabit per second uh, network attached to storage. Okay, right here, uh, I'm going to show you how going beyond 1 gigabit is not always going to be so easy. Uh, tuning up your computer so it is going to go beyond 2 gigabit per second is not something that this device does out of the box, let's say it that way. Uh, first, it requires a powerful computer and many other things. What do we need? That's what we're going to discuss. Uh, in this opportunity, we're going to use this US 16XG Unify switch, which is an awesome switch. Actually, it is very robust. It has 12 SFP Plus ports and four RJ45s that are going to give you each one of them 10 gigabit per second. This one is a 380 gigabit per second throughput switch. That is the reason why we're going to use these SFP Plus modules for RJ45s. And the reason why we are using these little SFP Plus modules is that out of the box, this switch does not provide 2.5 gigabit Ethernet in this four um, ports. Actually, these four ports are for 1 gigabit per second or 10 gigabit per second. As I said, this switch is for much more robust networks that we're going to discuss in future videos and that we have discussed in previous ones. Uh, by the way, you have a lot of options in the market right now and prices have dropped incredibly. So that's why we are encouraging you to use these devices that are widely available now and that are going to give you the opportunity to explore networks beyond 2.5 gigabit, 5 gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second and a mixture of both of them. But you have to be very careful that they support 2.5 gigabit per second networks. This is something very important, as you said, as I said a few moments ago. For example, the US 16XG uh, does not support it. You have to have a USB 3.0 or higher port and, or a Type-C connector on your computer, something like this. It is going to have this advantage. For example, if you don't have something like this, it is going to be very useful to use the Type-C connector as it is going to free one USB port. So let's get our hands on these little pluggable devices. And also, by the way, if you need to upgrade your computer, your desktop computer to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, you might want to consider one of these cards that we're going to leave the description either in our storefront in Amazon or the direct link to the devices uh, in the description. You're also going to need, for example, Category 6 or 6A cabling. Um, our recommendation, of course, is to use Category 7 if it is available for you or if you can afford it. As, uh, long distances of this cabling might be very, very expensive. We're going to connect it to our switch and we're going to start our practice. 
Once you connect the device directly to the computer, as we said, pluggable devices are very, very easy to use as they are uh, immediately configured by Windows and they become available for you. We recommend you that you check that your connection has gone up to 2.5 gigabit per second. For example, in this opportunity, in this case, it has not gone up to one gigabit per second and actually is that it doesn't even behave as a one gigabit per second connection. We made many tests. Actually, we went very, very deeply into using this device in order for us to give you our complete perspective over this device. Something that we noticed is that the processor became very, very stressed. That means that it, uh, this device is going to rely very much in the processor of the computer. We even deactivated the BitLocker in order for us to give uh, a little bit more of freedom to the processor. Also, something very important is to tweak in the network controller the 2.5 gigabit per second full duplex uh, overwrite for the specific port in order for us to get 2.5 gigabit per second connection. Right here in the first tests that we made, we were surprised as we were not able to go uh, even higher than 1.3 or 1.4, even 1.6 gigabit per second. We made many changes. For example, we tried even changing the hard drive. Our secondary hard drive of this computer uh, was a normal uh, spinning hard drive. So we changed it, we changed it for an SSD. Mm, the load of the processor became higher. We know that this is going to act as a bottleneck for our transfer speeds. Something interesting that caught our attention was that just making a transfer to one hard drive locally, it is gonna go up to 2.1 gigabit per second. Something interesting. 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, even looks as close as 2.4 gigabit per second, which actually makes us think that it is going to 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Bottleneck in the server, that was not the, the case. That was not the case in this uh, opportunity. We have the Marvel Action 10 gigabit per second network adapter, which is the TP-Link TX401 uh, network adapter, uh, which we're going to leave also the link in the description. We have tested that um, network adapter and has worked awesome. In a nutshell, what you're going to get is faster speeds. You're going to save almost half the time transferring files to a server, to a NAS, or even with direct link to another computer, which is something that we don't use much nowadays. And the final consideration, of course, the processor of the computer. As you can see right here, the CPU has been stressed at higher than 49%, which is actually a lot for just transferring speeds. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. You help us through the process of bringing you these experiences that we have worked with a lot of effort. See you next time.